the Studio Cuts Podcast with Taylor with WRRV. This is the Studio Cuts Podcast. Hey, it's Taylor from 92.7-96.9 WRRV. And the Studio Cuts Podcast is where we interview artists that were featured on Sunday Studio Cuts, our new music show on WRRV. Today, we're hanging out with Saint Nomad. There are three brothers who've teamed up to form a band together, and their song Nothing to Lose is making an impact in the alternative world. Where are each of you right now? So I'm actually on the road. Uh, this is Nikita. Um, I'm on the road driving from Denver to Sarasota, Florida. So I just pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> um, the guys can give their update. <laughs> Ruslan is in Nashville at the moment. And Jan here. I live in Denver. So I'm, I'm in Denver right now. Wow, so you guys are really spread out. Is there, like, crazy weather going on anywhere where you are? Or is there any, like, super strict COVID restrictions? Yeah, Denver, um, we, we had, like, freezing temperatures. But then oh, I had 63 degrees yesterday. Wow. <laughs> guys, so that's kind of Colorado for you, though. You know, it's like, you don't like the weather. You got to wait five minutes and it'll change. What was it like for you three to come from Russia to America? That was a really crazy experience, actually. I mean, we, we were all pretty young. Um, I'm Ruslan, the oldest. Um, and so it, it was definitely the biggest, uh, I feel like one of the biggest differences for me just because I went to school in Russia. And um, just coming, coming to America was really, really, really strange because I, I remember coming and, like, hating pizza. Um, it, it was like my, my mom was like, "Here's a slice of pizza." It was like a it was like a um, welcome party when we came came to the United States, and they had pizza for uh, for dinner for everyone. And I remember being like, "What is that food? This is what they eat here in America." Um, so it was really it was just like a really different thing we weren't used to. Um, and then the other thing for for all of us really was the language barrier. We we came here and like I went straight to third grade um, and didn't know the language at all. So it's kind of like the sink or swim um, situation. And so I did some like ESL and things like that. Um, but eventually here we are. <laughs> yeah, I feel like at this point we're probably more. I mean, we are Americans. We, we have our citizenship, um, and then Russian. Although we we certainly still hold on to some Russian culture. Yeah, I would say one response re- recollection is very accurate to mine in terms of like just being. Uh, I remember crying at like that pizza because all I wanted was like the food that I you know had as a kid and like I'd be like in the cafeteria and they would be like serving some you know something typical and like a PBJ sandwich or something like that and I'd be like oh my gosh this is, I've never tried this <laughs> how did you all get into music so that's a great uh, question Taylor um so we grew up in a pretty musical family my grandmother was a piano teacher and so at our house, it was like a rule that day you turn seven, you have your first piano lesson, and it was mandatory until like you were 12 or something. Um, so we had weekly lessons with grandma, and that really, um, it, you know, instilled the love of music for us. But growing up, um, my dad was always playing in, in different uh, jam bands, and um, back in Russia, even he he had a, like a little jam band too. So my mom um, sings and is musical, so it's definitely something that just ran in the family, um, and then it just kind of took off. It became our life. What is it like being in a band with your brothers? <laughs> I'll let one of the guys take that one. <laughs> um, I, honestly, it's been amazing. Um, we we really are like each other's best friends, um, and um, honestly, because we started music so young, um, and and one of our main outlets for music has always been you know playing music with band um and with each other i honestly can't tell you otherwise like i i will say this just having uh friends and my wife is actually a musician and it's a band and i've seen the dynamics uh of other bands close up i would say that we are way more democratic than a lot of bands that i've experienced <laughs> um it's it's a, it's a true democracy and like um 
But the, the like when it when it comes to making big decisions, it's definitely like the majority rule. <laughs> Would you see yourselves bringing in any outsiders to join the band, or would you keep it strictly just you three? Uh, I think say no more the three of us. Um, I don't know, guys. What do you think? That's, I, <laughs> I, I, I haven't really talked too much about that. Taylor, what, what think, instruments do you play? <laughs> I don't play anything. I play the microphone here and just talk. <laughs> well, we can make a spot for that, too, in the band. <laughs> I can be your hype man. Yeah, we um, no, we when we play live shows, like sometimes we'll have um, other musicians join us too. Like for example, Rasan's wife is an excellent guitar player and bass player, um, so she's played some shows with us, and we've had other friends kind of join too. So it kind of depends if we're touring, um, and it could look like we like like we'll we'll have other people on the thing with us. But um, when it comes to recording, writing making decisions of the band like we usually the three of us can you tell us how you guys chose the name saint nomad for your group yeah so actually rusan and jan were orig- originally came up with that name right guys um but i think that it's just very authentic to like who we are as people um i mean i'm literally calling you from the road so I lived in Colorado, lived in Nashville, and now I'm moving to Sarasota, Florida. And so I, I don't know, like, it's, it's just a, a lifestyle thing for us where we're always on the go. And that's a part of it. But also, like, growing up touring and, and traveling, was I think, influenced that quite a bit. And also the idea of, like, being foreign and being you know, accepted now as American citizens, as Americans, but still feeling like, yeah, but we're, you know, you can't disown the fact that you were born in a different country. And so you're kind of just like a drifter in a way. Um, So I don't know. I think music has really helped us find a home with our fans, though, like writing music, writing songs, and then playing those songs for people and that whole community aspect. Music is such a big, you know, thing with community. Like, it just draws people together. Um, And I I think that it just kind of ties in with what who we are and what we do in our life really i don't know do you guys have anything to add to that Jan response yeah i think you said it well i mean just the essence of being nomads <laughs> feeling like you're nomads um that's kind of where the name came from the name definitely makes sense especially because before you got to where you are today you guys did some serious touring for about a decade playing roughly 150 shows a year was that exhausting or rewarding I would say it was both. It was definitely a lot of fun, but, like, now looking back at it, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that was insane. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We were, we were, you know, we were teenagers uh, back then, and and I think we just had a lot more, uh, (laughs) we could stay up uh, for many nights in a row and not really feel it as much i don't know if i can do that now but um (laughs) but it was a it was a blast it was definitely a joy i feel really lucky we got to do that did this extensive touring impact the way that you create music yeah 100 100 percent uh it did um i feel like it was just super informative it comes to like our songwriting and how a crowd reacts um you know a live crowd reacts to music and um, I, th- I think it really shaped our decision making in terms of like how we, uh, you know, arrange songs and um, even like the parts and the songs we, you know, choose to go on the albums and like go, go out into the world. I feel like it really is a synergy of being able to see the feedback um, Uh, in real time and during shows and like being able to apply that to the music that you make and create release so what was the inspiration for the single Nothing to Lose? Uh, Nikita you want to take that one? Yeah this is Nikita Um, so it's an interesting song I kind of started like the idea of it in Denver and then I was on a writing trip in LA and I was writing with these guys in Hollywood and like just the way their the studio was situated, it was in the hills, and like you could see out 
you can see the city, you can see a bunch of stuff um, kind of on, on, a, on a hilltop. And it was just this incredible scenery and incredible um, inspirational moment where I was like, you know what, We've, I've been doing music for a while and I just want to write the best song I can and, and just enjoy this because what the heck, like, there's, you know, nothing to lose. Like, you give it everything you have and that's all you can give it. Um, so I think a lot of people resonated with that, and I'm so excited to see the support we're getting uh, from radio stations, from fans, um, people hearing that song. I'm so, so grateful. So thank you, Taylor. I really appreciate that. Of course. We're happy to support. The song is great, and I myself am really loving it. Thank you. You guys released your new album in 2020 called Memento Mori. Why did you choose this name, and what's the story behind the record? Yeah, we've always liked to kind of marry dark themes with uplifting music. Like, if you think about it, just all humans in general, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, um, you know, what what really hits home and close to the depth, like what makes what makes you human uh, is often serious subject. Um, so we really like like the visual aspect too. If you seen the art where it's like a skull, but then there's flowers growing out of it and butterflies, um, which sounds weird as I'm describing it. But kind of the premise of the record is really caring like uh, tougher subjects or um, darker themes with trying to create like uplifting music that you can listen to not necessarily be bummed out about all the time <laughs> when you're thinking about such things. And um, also, I guess, one thing to add to that is, um, if you know Memento Mori in Latin, means remember you have to die. So that's really, really dark and somber. But we saw it in the light of, like, if you know you have X amount of time left to live, you're going to make those days really cool. So, on the one hand, it's quite dark to think about, hey, am I, you know, you never know, you could die tomorrow or whatever. Um, but at the same time, if you're, if that's kind of on your mind always, it pushes you to live fully, pushes you to um, make every moment count and not just kind of live out your days without uh, intention. You've worked with some really impressive people in the industry, like the producer for James Bay and Kings of Leon. What was it like working with them? We, yeah, we did work with Jakir King, and he was uh, an amazing collaborator for us. Um, we, we kind of, as Think Nomad, have produced and written a lot of our own music and mixed it and everything. Um, so working with Jakir was the first time we brought in a collaborator on that, on the production and mixing front. Um, that really, uh, into St. Nomad, that really, really made sense. Um, he really kind of had the strengths and the skills that we we don't. Um, we're, we're kind of like bedroom producers, if you will. Like, we kind of come from that world of, you know, putting headphones on and working on something on your laptop in your room and recording drums in a garage and things like that. Uh, which a lot of the record is that. <clears throat> but working with Bakir, he's like a very proper uh, trained engineer. Um, and so he, we, we brought him uh, our demos and he was able to, you know, track drums properly over them <laughs> um, in, a, in a very like professional way. And that really added a really nice element and a professionalism to the music that I feel like we really complimented the, the songs, the two songs that we worked on with him. So he, he really, um, and we learned a lot from him. Um, and so this is something that we're applying to new music that we're creating now as well. So he, he was a very influential um, for, for me personally, just I've learned a lot from him. Um, so. Do you just dropped a new single in February called Heart on Drugs. What is the story of this song? Nikita, do you want to speak to that? Sure, yeah. That's another one that um, <laughs> that was written in multiple places, given the <laughs> nature of the band uh, with Nomad. Um, so I started that one in Denver. Um, we continued it in Amsterdam, uh, Netherlands, at a writing camp, and then we wrapped it up in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So it's, yeah, it's basically just like, you know, when you just feel like you feel too much or maybe not enough, <laughs> <laughs> you're just trying to like figure out like, am I being too sensitive or am I not sensitive enough? Like, is, or, am I crazy or am I overreacting to the situation right now? Why is everyone else so chill? Or why am I crying and nobody else is? <laughs> so uh, that's basically it. It feels like I feel too much or maybe not enough. It feels like my heart's on drugs. So um, I just fell in love with that idea. And we actually ended up working with some really talented people. So I, I'm excited for people, for people to hear that song. Yeah, interesting enough on the production side of that song, um, that one that... Uh, so we were kind of working on it right in the height of quarantine, um, and uh, we weren't able to be together in one room. So as I was working on the song on my end, uh, on the production, I asked Jan to play drums, um, like to create his drum parts and just record them because he didn't have access to recording equipment, just to record them in his basement uh, on his laptop through like the laptop microphone. Um, and so he did that and like created the parts and we like, played the song, built the song around that, built the production. Um, and then the time came, we were like, okay, let's get into a studio and like record the drums properly and like go through it. And we did all that and went through this whole extensive process of getting the quote unquote real drums on it. And, and then uh, we listened to it and we're like, you know what? The laptop drums were better. <laughs> and so an interesting, like a, a, li a little interesting thing of like being in quarantine actually led to like um, a really interesting drum sound on that song. So that's a little bit geeky. I apologize if I went too, too much into the production world, but that's <laughs> um, just an interesting fact about the song. It was not too geeky at all. I loved hearing about it. Even though you just dropped that song in February, is there any music we can look forward to later this year? Yeah, so we're working on new, uh, new, new singles going to come out, um, I believe, in March. Um, and so I, th I think the plan overall is to have a, the album, like a full-length album, another full-length album done and released uh, by fall. And so in between now and then, we're going to have multiple songs coming out. Uh, I, I'm tr I think we're trying to do like monthly releases is kind of the plan, but it's always shifting and changing or writing a bunch of new songs. So that, I feel like that's the tentative plan at the moment. All right, my last question for all three of you. If someone were to come to your cities, which is all over the place, what is the one thing they have to do? Um, well, I, I can tell you, I went to Sarasota for a weekend. I fell in love with it, and I'm moving there. So <laughs> what convinced me was uh, were the beaches and the water. So I'm excited for that. So I hope if you can get a chance to sneak away to Florida, Sarasota has some of the best, best beaches in uh, America. I would say for Nashville, um, I think... For me, I would I would say that you'd have to experience Broadway uh, post COVID, of course. But I would I would say you'd have to experience Broadway, uh, a late night on Broadway. If you if you like to drink and party, it's a good time. Yeah, and Colorado is known for its um, you know mountains and skiing and whatnot. So Aspen is really great to check out and Vail if you were ever in town. I think that makes you fall in love with the state altogether. <laughs> Taylor, thank you so much for the support and this for, for this interview and this time. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much, guys, for joining me and the Studio Cuts podcast. Thanks, Taylor. Amazing. Thank you so much for having us. Um, talk soon. Make sure to check out Nothing to Lose by Saint Nomad and watch for their new album to be released. And don't forget to catch Sunday Studio Cuts, a new music show featuring all of the up-and-coming alternative music hosted by me every Sunday at 10 p.m. on 92.7-96.9 WRRV. Join us next week as we interview another up-and-coming alternative artist on the Studio Cuts podcast.